Without a doubt, one of the biggest challenges you'll face as a web designer is spending a lot of time and effort building something that you are super proud of, hand it off to the customer, they have the ability to edit it and they break it or they destroy it and you're no longer proud of it. This is an ongoing battle, I think, with uh, certainly with myself and a lot of other web designers. So I just wanna take this opportunity to share my thoughts and just a couple of ways that we reduce the risk of this happening and we reduce the chances of our customers going in making changes for the worst. It really is disappointing to spend time building a website for a customer and not even being able to put it on your own portfolio or put your name to it because you're no longer proud of it. So what can we do to help solve this? That's what we're gonna be covering. Now, despite our best efforts, there are still gonna be some times when you know, you can't get around this. There will be a customer that wants full access to their site. And you know, rightly so, if they've spent money on it and they've purchased it, they should have ownership of it. That's the way that I feel. But there is a risk. They need to understand what these risks are. One of them being, if they make changes and they're not entirely sure what they're doing, they run the risk of the website being broken or looking less visually appealing as it did when it first launched. So I'm gonna be talking to you about three things here that I think will help you minimize the risk of this happening within your business. But before we do that, please remember to hit the like button if you haven't done so already. And let me know down in the comments, is this something that you are struggling with? Have you found that you've launched a project, you've given your customer access to it and they've destroyed it? If they have, I wanna hear about it, let me know in the comments. Okay, before we jump into these three things, there is a tip that I just wanna give you. Okay, whenever you build a website, and you're about to launch it and hand it off to the customer, just create a backup. Create a backup for yourself because a couple of reasons here. One, this will give you something to refer back to if you do want to include this website in your portfolio and you want to include the state that you launched the website at, not the state in which the customer has butchered it and potentially broken it and destroyed it. So if you create a backup, you're able to do that, but also you will have a backup if said customer goes in and breaks it immediately, you can just reverse back to that. And of course you can do ongoing backups through the likes of a maintenance plan and we'll get into that maybe a little bit more later in this video. But at the moment I would just suggest anytime you launch a website, do create a backup because that's gonna help you. Now the first one of these three things is starting at the beginning. Now what do I mean by this? If you figure out right at the start of the communication between you and the customer when you're figuring out the requirements, if you ask them who is going to be managing this website, then you're gonna have a much better understanding of whether you need to include things like training or how much training you need to include at the later stages of this project. Are they savvy with WordPress, for example, or whatever CMS that you're using? Do they have any technical knowledge at all? What's their role going to be? Or are they going to be managing this website at all? Because there has been circumstances where we have delivered a website to the marketing manager or the CEO of a business, but it's not even them that are using and managing the website. So you need to figure out who this is right at the beginning. And depending on the level of technical ability and their experience with managing other websites, this will depend on the level of training that you might want to give them. Because if they are very tech savvy, you could pretty much just get away with giving them a very basic understanding of how they use their individual site. But if they're not very tech savvy at all and they do want to be able to manage their own website themselves, then you might have to prepare to put in a lot more time and effort and a bespoke personalized training package for them, which you would then add onto the quote and bill more for. There's honestly nothing worse, and I've done this myself, than building a website, not really understanding how, who or how many people are gonna edit it or how much training is going to be needed. And if you spend you know, another 10 hours producing personalized training for a website that you've already quoted for and didn't factor that training in, you're gonna feel like you're doing a lot of work for nothing and it's, it's so painful. So to avoid that, what you wanna do is make sure that right at the beginning you figure out who is gonna be editing this, how technical they are and whether they need in-depth training or not because that could affect your quote. Make sure that you're billing for any additional training that you're having to supply to your customer to make sure that you don't get stung later down the line. And guys, they'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate that you are asking these questions, that you are thinking about the longevity and how they're gonna manage 
this website and make sure that it's working soundly for them for the long term. Okay, they will appreciate that. And if it comes by way of delivering additional training, they will value that. Now, the second way of minimizing the risk of any potential carnage when your customer is editing their own website is managing the expectations during development. So what I mean by this is manage those expectations that customers have when you are building the, the website out. Okay, often, I wouldn't say often, but previously, We've had customers that are really quite keen to jump into their site and start making changes, uh, whether it's adding page content, whether it's adding blog articles, or just getting a feel for the environment. And that's not something you really wanna do too early on in the project. If you're still going through uh, development iterations or building out pages, maybe you haven't even built the blog out yet, you don't really want the customer going in, one, to see a half finished project, but then also to potentially do something that's gonna damage or impact the, the process of the project and, and perhaps cause delays or something. I mean, that is rare, but it can happen. And there's not really any solid reason why a customer needs access to the website while it's still in that development phase, maybe towards the later end when most of the pages are done and you're just going through small technical revisions and testing. If you're in the testing phase, absolutely the customer could have access to start doing those things like adding blog content, adding images, adding page content, et cetera, et cetera. So my point here is, is for you to understand when is a good point to give access to the customer, but also to allow the customer to understand when a good point for you to give them access is and to manage their expectations too. And on top of that, you need to work out what level of access do you give them, okay? This comes back to my point in the beginning. How technical are they? What are their roles within the business? What's going to be their role when editing this website? Because both Elementor and WordPress allowed you to set different levels of users, okay? You've got the main admin, which is top level access, which if a non-technical person had admin access, they can cause a lot of damage. But if they're just going in to edit a few things, edit some text, edit some images, you have the ability to give them a role of editor. Okay, editor is going to limit the amount of access that they have and it reduces the risk of them breaking things. They don't get access to the themes or the, the code and things that can change the settings. Okay, they don't get access to that, which means if they come in as an editor, it really does minimize the risk of things going wrong. Now, it doesn't completely minimize it because they can still cause problems with the amount of content they add, for example. You know, if you've built a website or designed a website that's designed to have a small paragraph of text placed nicely next to an image and they come in and they put four or five large paragraphs of text in there, that's not gonna look very nice on the front end. So there still needs to be a level of training around how much content they should be using on average, depending on the page template, depending on the design of the website. But having an editor access certainly does reduce the risk of them going in and breaking things on a more technical level. So you really need to understand what level of access that person needs to have. Typically what we try to do in our business is to give people editor access and we will also give them an admin login and tell them to use it in emergencies. If they're not very well tech savvy, we will encourage them to continue working with us on a monthly basis using one of our maintenance packages so we can support them with any small amends going forward keeping things up to date and well maintained. So if you find yourself in a similar position, you can offer the option of a maintenance plan to help support your customer for the long term. And it's also a really good way for you to create monthly reoccurring revenue in your business. Now monthly reoccurring revenue as a web designer can be a game changer because it allows you to create predictability, it allows you to plan, understand your finances, and it, it removes a lot of the stress and anxiety because you know how much money is coming into your business. So maintenance plans is a great way to create monthly recurring revenue into your business. So if you are in a position to offer that, I recommend offering it. All right, now this brings us to the third point, the third step in reducing the risk of clients wrecking their website. And that is just making sure that you're going through the handoff process properly, making sure that you are handing this website off to a customer in the best possible way so things work out in the future. And the best way that you can do this is via training. I've mentioned training already in this video, but the training is important because the training is what's going to allow the customer to use their website in the right way. Now you don't know what you don't know, and that is the case for a lot of customers. They might know how to use WordPress, but they might not know how to use it in the way that you would like them to use it for their website. 
okay the best way you can do this is through training now we create training videos for our customers for each website that goes out now at the moment we produce one video one universal video should we say where we recorded it once and it's very generic and we send our customers to that every single time they want to learn about their website now we're looking to enhance that and already we're building out now already we're looking to improve that we're, we're currently building out a set of resource videos for each customer that we work with that we can send them to and it'll just make hopefully their lives a lot easier it will make our lives a lot easier because we have that one central place of information that we can send all customers to and they will have all the information that they need in order to run their website smoothly now if we worked on a fairly bespoke project okay we've got custom post types or custom functionality then we will also have to create an individual bespoke video for that customer but we take that into account when we're going through quoting phase if we know there's going to be custom functionality in there we also know that we're going to have to deliver training on that custom functionality so you can take that into consideration when quoting now on top of the video training you might also want to create a set of standard operating procedures or sops just to give them a text-based guide and that could just simply be a list of steps or a list of individual links to videos that they need to watch depending on what it is that they need to do in order to maintain their site you can also go as far to separate these things out depending on their role so an admin could have a whole set of videos based on their role as an admin and an editor could have a separate set of videos based on their role it really depends on how complex or how involved you want to be with this training but i would recommend anything that you do try to make sure that it's reusable okay think about that you don't want to be sitting down and recording the same old video for each client because it will get boring okay it's a waste of your time it's not efficient record it once make sure it's universal and reuse it for each customer so that's it in a nutshell really that's the three main things that you can do within your business to really minimize the chances of your customer breaking your site because it really is a headache it's so demoralizing when you revisit a site three six nine months down the line and it just doesn't look like the, the website that you delivered okay i've seen it time and time again in my business i know a lot of people that we teach in our community have this problem as well so i know that you are likely to have that problem as well and hopefully these tips have been able to help you do that now you will be surprised how many customers generally don't want to be managing their sites and they tend to feel like they have to but they actually don't, okay? Offering a maintenance package will allow them to buy back that time. It will take that responsibility away from them and put that on you as the web designer and give them the peace of mind that things are being done correctly, okay? And this allows you to create a really long-term ongoing relationship with your customer, which is gonna help you a lot in the future as well because if they're working with you and they're really happy with the work that you're doing, they've never had any problems because you're on it with the maintenance, you kept things up to date, things are fast, secure, you've always done the small amends that they've requested, then the chances are they're gonna refer you to their friends and other business people that they know that are also looking for a website. So bear that in mind too. Now I hope you found this video valuable. If you have done, please do give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Let me know down in the comments if you're having any troubles with customers ruining your sites as well. I'd love to hear them. And if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that too. Now the end screen is coming up with more videos here and here that you can click on that hopefully you will find valuable as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.